In the early minutes of 15 July 1945, the crew of USS Bluefish, on patrol up the Malayan Peninsula, heard two torpedo explosions. A minute later, one more. A minute after that, they heard a fourth. Her captain, Commander G.W. Forbes, believed them to be hits or end-of-run explosions from an attack by USS Blower, operating in coordination with Bluefish. The pairing of Blower and Bluefish as one half of a wolf pack, which also included USS Char and USS Hammerhead, was the blending of relative rookie and seasoned veteran. On just their third patrol, Blower's crew, enthusiastic as they were, had yet to sink a ship. Not unusual for this late in the war, with targets drying up. In contrast, Bluefish, from the time it completed its initial training out of submarine base New London two years earlier, had built a long and illustrious combat record. Her motto was, we made them blue. And her patrols included everything from sinking enemy ships and mines, reconnaissance and shelling airfields, to rescuing aviators, engaging in a gun duel with the Japanese picket boat. Now, in the pre-dawn hours of 15 July 1945, Bluefish was about to add another unique achievement to her list of accomplishments, sinking an enemy submarine. Since just before midnight, Blower had been tracking and then attacking a Japanese I-class submarine, driving it towards Bluefish. At 0323, Bluefish received a report from Blower, still dogged by bad luck. Attack completed, results doubtful. At 0330, Bluefish picked up a submarine zigzagging on the surface and tracked it to ensure it was not char or hammerhead. At 0352, Commander Forbes determined the submarine was indeed Japanese and went to battle stations for a night surface attack. American submarine attacks on Japanese submarines were not rare. 16 successful attacks had occurred prior to the start of 1945, with just one American submarine, USS Corvina, lost in battle with an enemy submarine. In fact, the first enemy warship sunk by American submarines following the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor was the submarine I-173, sunk by USS Gudgeon on the first submarine offensive patrol of World War II. Despite the success rate of American submarines against their Japanese counterparts, these sinkings were incidental to the highly effective anti-shipping war and the offensive against the Imperial Navy's surface forces, primarily aircraft carriers, cruisers, and destroyers. The Japanese Navy had entered the war with by far the most varied fleet of submarines, including manned torpedoes, chitin, midget submarines, purpose-built supply submarines, many used by the Imperial Japanese Army, submarines with the highest submerged speeds of the conflict, the I-201 class, and submarines able to carry multiple bombers, World War II's largest submarine, the I-400 class. They were also equipped with the most advanced torpedo of the conflict, the oxygen-fueled Type 95. However, after initial successes by Japanese submarines in 1942, the sinking of the USS carrier Yorktown at Midway and the carrier Wasp and light cruiser Juno in the Solomons and patrols well into the American waters off the Washington and Oregon coasts, Imperial Navy submarines had given a poor account of themselves in 1943 and 1944. This was due in large part to the lack of a comprehensive strategy and primary mission. In 1945, with most of the Imperial Navy surface fleet either out of fuel or on the bottom of the ocean, Japanese submarines were about the only Navy units operating, and thus American submarines began to devote more time hunting them. By mid-July, when Bluefish and Blower began their tag-team pursuit of the Japanese I-351 class submarine, American submarines had already sunk seven enemy submarines in this new offensive. The first and most destructive blows came in February with USS Batfish's incredible four-day feat of sinking three Japanese submarines engaged in evacuating personnel from Luzon, making her the only submarine of any nation to sink three of her own kind. By the end of the month, USS Legardo had added another, making February a record month in the anti-submarine offensive. In April, USS Seal sunk the RO-46 off Wake Island, and USS Pasugo torpedoed the German submarine U-183 in the Java Sea. The presence of the German U-boat, an indication of the growing decimation of the Japanese submarine fleet. In June, USS Skate, one of the Hellcats operating in the Sea of Japan, brought the yearly total up to seven. 
the sinking of the former mine laying submarine I-122, relegated to training duties. Now on July 15th at 0400, Bluefish was about to bring the total to 8. Under moonless and starlit skies, Bluefish closed within 8,000 yards of I-351. Commander Forbes made ready all tubes and headed in. At 0405, the target zigged away. At 0409, the target zigged back toward Bluefish. And at 0411, she fired four Mark 14 torpedoes at the enemy submarine and swung around to bring her stern tubes to bear. Before any more torpedoes were fired, the first and second torpedoes hit, breaking the I-351 in two. The flame shot high into the air as the submarine sank. Having been on a tanker trip from Singapore to Japan and loaded with gasoline, the flames continued to rise from the sunken sub for hours. Into the smoky, orange flaming fuel slick, Bluefish ventured in search of survivors, eventually pulling three aboard. On July 22nd, Bluefish left her patrol area and arrived at Fremantle on the 29th, for war over. At the sinking of I-351, the U.S. Submarine Force's anti-submarine offensives were nearly finished. On August 14th, just hours before the Japanese surrender, USS Spikefish torpedoed I-373, another supply boat. It would be the last Japanese submarine sunk during the war.